Now I'm guessing that you have, in your mind, an image of the quintessential prideful person. He has his nose in the air, he never admits he's wrong, he carries himself like he's better than everyone else. He boasts about his accomplishments and he can't remember a single time he's ever failed. Now, folks like this do exist. <laughs> Maybe someone you know is coming to mind, but the truth is, most of us are not so obviously prideful. And yet, still, uh, all of us in one way or another struggle with pride. It might not look like the images in our heads though. And so what does pride usually look like? Pride might look like not being able to forgive my friend because I would never do something like that. Mm. Pride might look like not being able to forgive myself even when everyone else has because I have a higher standard than they do. Pride might look like reveling a bit too much in that reward that I got and the fact that others didn't get it. But it also might look like taking no joy in the award at all because I'm too good to care about what other people think of me. You see, pride is simply being preoccupied with being excellent. In fact, better than others. It may be about being smarter or better or looking uh, nicer or more powerful or more spiritual or more talented or more authentic or even more humble than other people. And it's tricky because as soon as you think you've conquered pride, pride sneaks back in and says, wow, look at what an unusually humble person you are. <laughs> Most of the time, pride is paired up with its close cousin, vainglory. Mm. The vainglorious person doesn't just want to be better than others, they want others to know they're better to recognize their excellence. The prideful person is preoccupied with excellence. The vainglorious person is preoccupied with recognition, with getting glory from others. And vainglory is often the fuel that keeps the fire of pride burning. So when we post something on Facebook that gets a lot of likes or something on Twitter that gets retweeted a bunch of times, we may start to think that we're more clever or more beautiful than other people. When someone tells us how amazing we look in that outfit, we start noticing how drab their outfit is compared to ours. When we get recognized on the honor roll, we realize that we're the only one of a few kids on that list. Seeking recognition for our achievements or qualities is often a way that we feed the beast of pride in our lives. For most of us, most of the time, pride and vainglory are two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Now, if pride is thinking of yourself as better than others, then what's the opposite of pride? In, in other words, what is humility? Well, we're tempted to think that humility is thinking of ourselves as worse than others. Mm. But that would be the natural opposite, right? Not exactly. You see, the key to pride is comparison. You're not just good, you're better. You're not just kind, you're kinder. Noticing that you're good at something isn't prideful in itself. It's the desire to excel others that's prideful. Without comparison, there's no pride. In fact, if we try to avoid pride by thinking of ourselves as worse than others, we can actually end up exacerbating our pride in the long run. How does that work? Well, for many of us, what underlies our pride is a deep insecurity about our worth and value. In 1 Peter 5, we read, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. You see, there is a connection between our insecurity and our pride. We need to be reassured of our value, our worth, and our belovedness. And the primary way we know to do that is by comparing ourselves with others. So even by thinking of ourselves as worse than others, we're continuing the comparison game, making ourselves feel more insecure and creating an even deeper desire to reaffirm our value. Mm. And if we're still in the comparison game, how long do you think it'll take for pride to rush in and try to save our self-worth? So if humility isn't considering ourselves worse than others, what is it? 
Someone once said, humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. While a humble person does put others' needs uh, and glory before their own, it's not because they think of themselves as less as worthy or less deserving or uh, less than the other person. It's simply because they think of themselves less and they think of others more. Yeah, the humble person is aware of herself without being preoccupied with herself. Mm. She glories in excellence wherever she sees it, in herself, in others, it doesn't matter. But she does not need others to glory in her because she knows her worth and value are unassailable. She knows that the Lord cares for her. How does she know that? Because when she casts her anxieties on the Lord, she discovers that the Lord cares for her. She is the beloved of God. What could give her more worth than that? And that deep awareness gives the humble person inner confidence, a, a lasting sense of their own worth and dignity. And that kills pride and enables them to participate in community, regardless of status or recognition they'll achieve. In the next video, our spiritual director in residence, Betsy Slate, she's going to walk us through a practice of confession that will help us develop deep and healthy humility.